this one is something that I'm interested in. Okay, if you say so. I started recording already. Oh, man. I always do this to me. You should expect it now. Um, well, have you ever watched Surviving the Cut? No, I don't even know what that is. What is it? I can't remember if it first aired on Discovery or Spike. It was on one or the other. And then went to the other with a, a different edit than what it was originally. Okay. Can you reach over to those? I can hear it. Uh, I can hear it too. They can hear you moaning. I did not moan. Yeah. I reached. It's the same noise that you make when you're moaning. It's the exact same noise. Is this thing not turned down? What's going on here? Um. So you've never seen Surviving the Cut? No. Like I said, I don't know what that is. Okay. Well. Give me the let's go, let's go ahead and introduce people. Hi, Willow. I'm trying a little experiment, seeing if if Willow can be out with us. So Willow's in the studio. She's our she's our howler though. So mm -hmm. so if not, anybody comes by the house or to the door, if you guys heard click clacking, sorry about that. That's her on the hardwood floor with her little. That is exactly how she walks. She walks like Scooby Doo, or not Scooby Doo. She walks like Shaggy in Scooby Doo. Okay. So if you're familiar with the old Scooby Doo cartoons, that's exactly how our dog walks is like Shaggy. Lanky. She's put on a little bit of weight since we got her. Hi. You want to come up here and introduce yourself? Oh, and you just farted. <laughs> she got a big poop out back, so maybe she just had a little leftover gas. Hey, that's my water. No, no, no. No, no, no. I know. Your mommy's in school. It's okay. We'll be here for you. Um, So, Surviving the Cut. Okay. Wait, by the way, this is episode eight of the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. And we're going to talk about military topics i know that you don't know anything about it but i do have questions that are relatable to you okay and how some uh props and things like that so and this is also uh for for my friends on twitter that i don't know personally okay. um his friends yeah on yeah twitter. yeah and uh people that i do know because okay. that's Basically, the majority of my friend group are other veterans and current service members. I would agree with that. So, since those are probably going to people be the people that are going to be on the show, they'll have stuff to say about these topics as well. Anyways, um, my buddy, my buddy Jake, Jacob Munt, uh, that I worked at RTB with many, many moons ago. Okay. Um, springs us back to surviving the cut. You say you don't know what it is. So. Right. They filmed, um, the first episode actually specifically was Ranger School while I was cadre there at 4th. Um, they just filmed training. Like, what is it like? And now you have all these derivative shows of that where the reality TV shows were like, they do like SEAL training. It's not, it's not really, um, or, you know, special forces selection, stuff like that. These little gauntlets, boot camps, whatever. Um, for regular people. Yeah. To... Well, I think, I think it's mostly like actors, movie stars. Whereas surviving the cut were actual yeah. military yeah. people. And they were, they were really, they were really going through the training. Right. And, yeah. Okay. So just, just making sure I'm following you here. Um, whichever one it was on first. Okay. I was on the first episode. In one version. You're you on can, TV? And yeah. In one version, you can see my face and the other version you can't. Did you add that to your IMDb? I wasn't ever, I think you have to have that set up like at the time or like the studio. I don't know how it works, but. I don't know how it works either. I don't think any of us that were there at that time are on IMDb. Maybe. I don't know. I can look up, see if Jake, because they interviewed him a lot in the last episode of the first season. 
Um, but so you've never seen it, correct? When, when, um, I can't, I can't look it up and talk at the same time. I can't, I can't. I just, I need to focus on one thing. I know. So, on the the Ranger School episode. Um, I don't really actually remember. I I want to show Cash this show because I think I think he'd really like it. I never I don't know why I never thought to show it to him. He loves. I mean, he loved um, Band of Brothers. He loved. Do you think it'll be too much talking, too much commentary? No, no, no. Because he he actually gets to see like the actual. It's not like a movie. Then yeah, maybe yeah. he'd be into it with you. He gets to see them getting yelled at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. I wonder. Good stuff. I wonder, if, I wonder if I can find like director's cut because there's probably because for TV it was cut down to like 20 minutes. Like how do you how do you fit 63 days of training into 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it was? Yeah. Um, and you made I was cut. I was not training. I was Adre. I was working. I meant you made oh the TV cut. Yeah. The down to 20 minutes. Yeah. You wanted Andrew Lee Max. Yeah. Well, it was a student that we were treating, treating during rap week. Are you putting that in quotation marks because it was false? No. So if you have any sort of medical intervention or have to use your medication, so if you come with an inhaler or an EpiPen or anything like that, you'll either be recycled or held over or sent back and asked to come back in. Recycled? Yeah, start over. That's exactly what it sounds like. Go back to day one. Or depending on what phase you're in, it... it it completely depends. They have what are called peer evaluations. If your peers think you're just a complete piece of shit, okay. you might not be able to continue through the school. So there's okay. there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to pass and there's a lot of ways to fail. Willow's back. Um, it smells like fish, by the way. Yeah. So actually, that's that's gonna that's what we're gonna be doing with the um, okay. in June. We're gonna have evaluations. So okay. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. You're welcome board daddy yeah well i'm the executive director i'm not an employee i'm the i'm the i'm a corporation member so it's in my best interest for the organization to continue progressing Mm -hmm. um now so the first episode was ranger school of the first season i think there were ended up being two seasons the last episode of the first season was sniper school, which at the time we provided medical coverage for. It's all changed around now. I think it's the our, our airborne and ranger training brigade. So I don't know if they just fall under one larger command or if RTV, as I knew it, medical cadre cover airborne as well. Because like we did, um, it's called a RSLEC school. It's a recon school for the army. Um, we did medical coverage for for that as well. We had a, a dedicated platoon for that, though. I, I only had to do it, actually, the first day I got there. That was the first thing I did was uh, medical coverage for spies and fries, fast roping and extraction. It's called spies and fries. Yep. That's it's an, it's the an, actual term. For they're it. acronyms. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just over here playing with floppy ears. Got both floppy ears. So um, for those that are listening and not watching, I'm having a ADHD, ADD moment. But you did, in fact, take your medication. Yeah, right here on camera on the last episode. So anyways, so episode 10 uh, was sniper school. Mm -hmm. And one of the cadre members from, I don't know if he was a Merrill's or Ravel's platoon, they were op four, or uh, opposing forces platoons. My buddy Jacob Munt, who I've talked about a lot, um, he was going through cyber school all the time mm-hmm. and for their final ruck march, he had rolled his ankle at some point during training and, uh, he needed to be able to complete it to pass and graduate. So he came up to my barracks room, woke me up. It was like a Saturday or Sunday morning, something like that. Like stupid, really, I wasn't working and I believe either we were between cycles, so either we didn't have a class or they were at Darby. So there was no, there were nobody else like at the aid station. It was just kind of one of those, you know, things where there's literally nobody else there. 
Um, calls me down. He's in a rush. So run down to the aid station, get all the way down to the doors, realize I don't have my keys. My car is parked on the other side of the building. He's in a rush or not on the other side of the building. Sorry. In the parking lot. And I didn't want to go back up to the catcher of barracks to get my actual keys to the door. So I just got my buck knife. Bear in mind, this is a brand new building at this point in time in 2009, 2010. There was a tornado that tore most of the building down. It jumped over most of Camp Rogers. It destroyed part of the land nav course on the other side of the highway, jumped over the highway, missed almost all of Camp Rogers, destroyed the aid station, went off. This is before I got there too. So I got there when there was only a wall. And of course, bureaucracy, because of it being, there was an existing wall and slab, it was considered a renovation rather than a new building. Essentially it was a $2 million building. I broke into the ambulance bay <laughs> of a brand new building on camera, not knowing it was on camera with a buck knife because the French doors, you know, both of them swing open. So I just popped the door open, had no idea they were, they were filming that, uh, wrapped his ankle and graduated. So, uh, he was, I texted him, I sent him the link for the show and he said, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. I want to be a guest sometime. And I know that's exactly what he's going to bring up. That's why. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so you're free facing for in about a year and a half when we have studio and audience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he does cool guy stuff these days. Mm, cool yeah. guy stuff. Yeah. Cool guy stuff. You just want to be a cool guy, but he does actual cool guy stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never went through cool guy training. I went through normal, regular guy training, but normal I know the cool guys. Guy. Yeah. You're saying that it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> um. So yeah, I want to find. There's them. nothing normal or regular about you. I want to find that in show cash because it, it's pretty cool. Um, sniper training is pretty cool and unique. Actually, the uh, Marine Corps just did away with their snipers. They just had their final final class ever. I say it's because they're preparing for a new style of warfare. We'll see. They'll probably want their snipers back eventually. What style is new that they're preparing for? Whatever the next wave of conflict involves. I mean, who needs snipers when you can just fly a drone to kill people? They're, I, I just watched something last night. They're, uh, they're predicting that naval warfare, as we know it, is probably over. Because Ukraine, who doesn't have a navy, is basically annihilating Russia's navy with suicide drone strikes, stuff like that. So land-based attacks, they're basically, yeah. Who wants to build these big, heavy, expensive ships just to have them sank by a drone strike? Space, once again. <laughs> Hence the Space Force. We rule the air, we rule the sea. We rule the night. We own the night is what we actually say. Um, yeah, right now we own space. Effectively and figuratively, we own space. We have the most functional and the most space junk. Yeah. The only reason that there's no real true conflict with the U.S. and Russia is because of the ISS. Nobody wants to leave their people stranded up there. That's That would be a nightmare. Could you imagine if a cosmonaut or astronaut was left stranded in space by the other country or killed in space? Big deal. Mm -hmm. That would be a big deal indeed. Yeah. So, the so, one and only time you've been on or in a military installation was a couple months ago, mm -hmm. last month. Yes. On Fort Bragg, now known as Fort Liberty. Mm -hmm. That is correct. What did you think of the living conditions? As soon did... as I saw it, it looked like asbestos. Looked like and smelled like asbestos. And I never got out of my vehicle. You did. Oh, yeah. I had to run into that building real quick. And because I was not of military affiliation in any way, I did not feel welcome. Nobody feels welcome. <laughs> I, mean, I feel welcome. I have because no desire to ever return. I feel welcome because it's just, it's familiar. 
Mm. Even though I was never stationed there. Okay. I'd been there, visited there when Alex was in. Mm -hmm. My uncle, for those in the audience, uh, retired out of Bragg. Liberty. If you just disconnect the name from the person it was named after. Like for those of us that have been out for a while and we hear these new installation names, like I don't even know what or where that is. I think we kind of talked about this, that they should just name the installation after what it actually is. Fort Shithole? I don't know, Fort Airborne Special Operations. like Or Special Operations Command Facility something, I don't know. Everything is the center of excellence. And actually, <laughs> part of Lemax Media rebranding. So when... Oh, this should be good. Lemax Media rebranding. Center it, of ex excellence. Yeah. Website excellence. I don't remember exactly what I... It's Yeah, it's um, like web and app or something like that. Center of excellence. I don't know. But um, it started roughly around when I was getting out, when the uh, armors, arm, arm, uh, tankers, not thinking, again, ADHD moment. Um, when they moved down there, they renamed it the Maneuver Center of Excellence. So now everything, um, future Sergeant Major uh, on Twitter, his uh his handle his so handle his name is future sergeant no no no, 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 no. I'm, I'll, I'll get to him so his handle so the at whatever is you'll love this um assistant to the regional manager okay dwight yeah but his name that goes with it is uh med pros center of excellence so med pros is something that everybody in the army is very familiar with I'm intimately familiar with it because I had to do dead entry as a medic into med pros, mods before that, and I think Q, WS, QRS, something like that, DOS-based prompt, where basically I had to memorize people's social security numbers so I could say, Nona Phelps went to the dentist today. Click. Yeah. So it's a big part of uh, um, unit readiness. Obviously, other training falls into that as well. You have to be up on your physical fitness. You have to be up on height and weight. You have to be up on um, range qualifications, whatever other additional qualifications for your MOS. You know, if you've let something elapse, you're going to get in trouble. Or your command is going to get in trouble. Um, but medical readiness is a big part of that. So, um, how do I get off on that tangent? I'm talking about... The name. Moving. Yeah. Fort Liberty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why is it called Fort Liberty now? Well, because they couldn't agree on the name. And now it's still a running joke. Every time there's something that comes up and they're like, yeah, this would have been a good story. They should have named Fort Liberty after after this guy or this girl. Nope. Because the Airborne Operations Commander and Special Operations, they couldn't agree on who they wanted it named after. And we kind of had a discussion about this. There's overlap. There's overlap. There are people, most of them, in special operations who are airborne qualified. Mm -hmm. Name it after someone where there's overlap. There there are so many key figures. Like every installation has a gym that's named after Audie Murphy. There's nothing, there's no installation that I know of named after Audie Murphy. Audie Murphy. I don't know why not. Who is that? Just go look it up. These people know who it is. I'm not going to read how she stole it. <clears throat> War hero. Put it that way. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, the living conditions are Looked abysmal. And they're the same as they were when I was in. Um, one of the guys who's coming on to help us out with some stuff intermittently and, uh, for veteran wiki. Yep. Um, and his employer will match his time. They will make donations in kind financially um, for his time to the organization, which is cool. 
Um, never knew something like that existed. And we finally got uh, some stuff checked. So Jake had uh, already filed with that, like the uh, uh, middleman for those transactions. And when he read off to me, the guy from Hots and Cots, which I'm getting at, when he read off to me the address, I was like, no, <laughs> that is not our address. And then it clicked after the fact because it was a California address, and that's where Jake is. He had set it up and didn't know what the address was, and he knew that it could be changed at any time. So I had to reach out to their support, and I was like, that's not our address. And then they CC'd Jake on the response. I accidentally emailed from Lemax Media, not thinking about it. But my Lemax Media email is associated with all of it. But then there's the uh, Veteran Wiki email as well. So they emailed CC Jake and they're like, uh, here's the the person, uh, like the owner or manager of the listing or whatever. And I was like, oh, duh. So then I responded and CC'd myself on Veteran Wiki with him. And I was like, so this is my organization. I just want to make it look a little bit more official. I apologize for using the wrong email. Um, but the intent of Hots and Cots is to improve living standards, living conditions, not just of the facilities, but also of food. I don't know if you know this or not, but soldiers, for the most part, are not paid. Like, they don't receive um, money to eat. There, there are instances where people can get put on what's called separate rations. That typically falls into people, uh, falls on people that work in positions like, say, the MPs. Like, that's when I was on separate rations is when I was attached to the MPs. Because they might work shifts where they're overnight and the dining facilities are not open. So they're placed on separate rations. That way they can buy food at the commissary specifically if they're not married or have children or specific rank, this is for lower enlisted. Generally, if you're, you know, senior NCO officers married, you typically have uh, BAS. Um, BAS stands for, uh, of course you'd ask basic allowance for, something i don't remember bah is for housing yeah so anyways um this is what happens when you've been out for 14 years and you were only in for four mm. it's kind of a blip in my life where i i forget some of these like smaller details and then i look like i was never actually in which i think is but the way that you talk about it it what's well, also it's it sounds like one of the largest blips in your life mm -hmm. it's all encompassing for you well it's, it was fun i had a lot of fun okay there was also a lot of not fun but if you could eliminate the not fun parts like all your injuries yeah but still you know the the fuck fuck games as we call it no that's not fun i don't know what that means Got a willow tree to cl it's when, climb on me. Over. It's it's when your um, command group doesn't believe in nine to five. So that means fuck fuck games. When they when they want to hold you as long as possible, mm -hmm. just for the sake of holding you as long as possible, or coming up with reasons. Why don't you go mop the motor pool in the rain, everybody? Why don't you go pull weeds? Why don't you go take that rock? From over there, move it over there. Paint that rock and then move it back over there. Yeah, that sounds pretty terrible. That's her tail. <laughs> mass mass punishment. You know, one person, some jackass, gets a DUI. So they call everyone in at four AM on a Saturday morning. Oh my god. And make you stand there in formation. So this is gonna this can gets you pause it. Can I pause it? Yes. Can you pause it? We're, Why? Getting, we're getting a phone call, an important phone call. Ah, are we going to get an offer? Bye. Yes. yes. Bye. We'll be back. We're back. We're back. Got an offer. Yes. On my house that I'm selling. Very, very exciting. Which is kind of fortunate because a month ago we were trying to sell it for 30 to 40 grand less than that. Potentially. If Johnny's guy would have bought it. Oh, you're talking about the VA assumable loan and... Yeah. Basically an investor who is possibly interested. Yeah. I'm basically a real estate mogul. Double of my money in six years. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> the market definitely favored your house. Yeah. 
I was in the right place at the right time multiple times with that property. Meeting me. Yeah, that too. That yeah. was the best part of you buying that house, right? I would have met you regardless. I Well, we might not have hung out. No, we would never have hung out again. You would have met me that one time with, hey, there's tits outside. You need to go see that. No, because you would have ended up being at your friend's house. We would have probably bumped into each other in the backyard or something. No. Nope. Yes. Nope. So anyways. So anyways. We're talking about living conditions. Yes. Abominable living conditions. So you didn't you didn't really see the entire installation. Correct. I did not. But you saw enough. Yes. Enough. If I went back in right now, would you come with me? Only if we could live off base. Yeah, you can. Okay, so then, yes, as long as we can live off base. I would not want to live on that compound or whatever you want to call it. But even in Fayetteville? You would live in Fayetteville? Um, I, I mean, obviously, I don't know. You would say most contracts for one location are how many years? Depends. Depends on your MOS. Depends on your Two years. specialties. Anywhere from one to the entire duration of your contract. I could tolerate one year in Fayette, but I, I don't have, know if I could tolerate two. I'd probably have to go through retraining. I'd probably drink a lot. I'll just be honest about that. I would have to go through retraining, so there would probably be a, a period of time where... Where you're gone? <laughs> okay, can you sign up tomorrow? No, I'm not going back in. I know, your back wouldn't allow it. No. They wouldn't even accept you. Yeah, they would. They're desperate. They're so desperate for people. You in. don't think they would take one look at you and go, mm, nope. I can pass everything you are so far gone with your back there is just no way that you would yeah, be they, able have to... they have waivers for that kind of stuff uh waiver can't carry a rucksack waiver can't lift anything waiver can't that's, function that's the beauty about being a medic i could just continue playing school nurse okay then do it no unless you want to make less money than what we make now you really think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, okay. Um, Married. Not single. You were single when you were enlisted. Yeah. So that's already pay bump being married, right? So base pay. I'm just, I threw an E4 because I would have to be retrained, I'm sure, whatever. So base pay, $2,600 per month. Don't you get a bump for having a college degree? Yeah. Right. So then wouldn't it be even? I'm just, I'm, I'm going with the lowest possible. Okay. I could probably go in as, I could probably go to, um, um, oh my God, I can only think of I bulk, but. Did you say I bulk? Infantry basic officer leader course, but I wouldn't obviously be going in as infantry, so. Okay. Um, yeah, I can go in and commission, which would make more money, but, um, lost my train of thought. Would you, would you take that pay cut? That didn't look like a pay cut. It's a pay cut. That's less than what I make on disability now. And that's less than what I make from any of my clients. That was gross pay. That's that's gross pay. That's before any deductions or anything like that. Yeah, of course, for having dependents, it goes up, but not a lot. You get you get uh, like cost of living allowances and stuff like that, depending on on where you live. Pay and adjustments based on. So I could live here with the kids, and you can go live on base. No. I mean, yes, you could, but no, they wouldn't pay you for what's here. They would pay for closest, the zip code around the installation. Gosh, okay. So you couldn't just go live in an expensive house somewhere and expect that they're going to. Well, uh, Pinehurst, isn't that where like all the officers live? I don't know. I've only, I've only been through Pinehurst a couple times. who are stationed at Fayetteville? I don't know. I don't know. 
Alex, Alex and Pam lived, Alex and Pam lived in Hope Mills and Russ lived in Fuquay, Verena. So we were only ever in those areas. I've only ever been to Binehurst a couple times. Well, I thought it was like. I went to, uh, the rich and actually there. Andrew, Andrew Heggie, who used to be their lead chemist at the brewery there. I can't think of the name of it. Um, I know him through like Matt Leviner and those guys. I went there before. I don't even know where he's at now, if he's even in North Carolina anymore. But um, that's literally the only only time and place I've ever been. I went there a couple times with my dad years ago. And I've never, I didn't pay attention to any of the neighborhoods in the area. I don't really know what it looks like. I don't even know why we were there. <clears throat> no idea. Um, so anyway. So... Let's say that I was stationed in Japan. Where'd you go there? Can honestly say the idea of moving or visiting Japan has never crossed my mind. Italy. Yes. Germany. Maybe. Poland. Nah. A little too cold. Korea. No, thank you. Panama. Okay. Alaska. No. Uh, the last couple months in a, yes, a thousand percent yes. Where else? Fort Bliss, Texas. Okay. On the border of. Oh, Mexico. just kidding. No. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. They were just overrun yesterday yeah, by, thank you. by immigrants. They uh, no, overran the National Guard at the border, and <laughs> they're not allowed. They're not allowed to open fire or anything. So they're just letting waves of these immigrants. Through. Oh my god. Yeah. They're uh, the they're the the immigrants themselves uh, apparently are they're uh, rioting and they're pissed off because they keep getting caught by the national guard and shipped back over the border and that's not something that was happening when only CBP was manning the border they would take you to a detention facility they're rioting for getting caught they're getting caught being deported and coming back again and it's just wave over wave over wave of these people repeating it over and over okay. The National Guard doesn't have the manpower there. I think they just activated even more. And you saw that meme, that picture that I sent you, um, the uh, AI-generated image of the alligators yes. wearing body armor. Yes, so the, that was funny. <laughs> the Louisiana National Guard was sending in support. They were on uh, on the, the train beds. Mm -hmm. That was pretty funny. I like that. Could you imagine if there was a moat? And they were, I mean, they have the conditions. Just fill the entire river with alligators. Okay. Go to Lake Waccamaw. Yes. Yes. Go to Lake Waccamaw. Take all of them out of the lake. Mm -hmm. Throw them in the river. No, leave 25%. They'll be better. There's, there's, no. They there's, figured there's out. There's clearly an ecosystem there that it needs. There's also a whale found there. So they they figure out how to get, a, get there. There's a lot of conspiracy around that whale. Somebody will figure it out. Sure. I think it was only a skull, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Conspiracy is that somebody put it there it's to a, be found. It's a man-made lake in uh, North Carolina, mm -hmm. kind of midway between Wilmington and Fayetteville area. Mm -hmm. Midway? Depends well, on how you drive. 40 minutes from Wilmington. No, it was 40 minutes from our old house because we could get to my dad's house that was on the lake in 45 roughly but from here it's the same distance it's the same distance but it's a more ridiculous drive there's more much more traffic and right now trying to get across the bridge well yeah i mean the bridge is terrible right now but you probably very you, different you'd probably be better off going like 421 and then cutting over kind of like we came back that one day um so you would Move around. As long as it's warm. That's the theme there. Would the kids tolerate it? Um, now in their older and wiser years, more sassy and independent, they would definitely be more uh, upset about it. If it was five years ago, or even when we first met three years ago, they would have been more adaptable. Going into high school, that is a terrible time to move. I don't think there's ever a good time to move. 
but elementary school elementary school it's really the only good time to move or anything before that preschool daycare area i think the only reason why your kids would be more malleable is because they went to such a small school and they don't really have very many friends like they don't they're you know i I lived in the neighborhood that the elementary school that i went to was connected to everybody lived around each other we all played and hung out outside like there was more community to that versus here none of their friends live near us at all well so when i was nine my parents packed up and moved to the faroe islands and the agreement was that that was supposed to happen every five years it finally happened when i was nine not five like the original plan and cost prohibitive or it just doesn't make sense to move three children for even one year when they're all in school and that just alters all of their schooling situations and alters your mom's a teacher though so she could have just homeschooled you how does that work if if you're living out of the country and you're being homeschooled are you homeschooled based on the standards they have to pass in the states or I don't know we enrolled in school there so i don't know but i'm sure i mean you hear about the stories all the time about people who are getting an rv and traveling across the united states i can only imagine that if they're homeschooling they're homeschooling based on the standards of the state that they moved from not the states plural that they're traveling through or some variation of it you don't think it would also depend on how long they're there for Maybe, maybe. Because I would think that you would have to have some sort of permanent residence, driver's license. I don't know. I don't know how any of that works. I'm sure there are podcasters who are currently traveling across America with their children doing exactly this, so we could find out exactly what their standards are that they have to abide by. So this is unrelated, kind of a tangent. Did you hear about the uh, woman, I believe, in Ohio? Uh, no, no. I'll already tell you no. I did not hear about this. So she had an infant, toddler, can't remember, had. Um, and she decided to pick up and take a 10-day vacation to Puerto Rico and left the kid in the crib the entire time. So she's going to prison right now. But if you guys could see her reaction... If you're not watching, but. That's so sad. Yeah. Yep. Found, found in feces and yeah. Dehydrated. Because nobody. Alive? No, dead. Oh, well, you said dehydrated. So I got hopeful there for a second thinking. No, no. So sad. What do you think? takes for somebody to get to that point Uh, i mean obviously there's probably two schools of thought here either she was already a piece of shit or she had a psychotic episode of some kind i think i think that was i think that was part of her attempted defense was that there's some sort of stress or something along those lines right which you really you can't really argue that unless you have a true understanding of their history prior do to Do you think she even attempted to reach out to somebody to I, don't, I don't know. Um okay, so I I personally have no experience with postpartum of any kind, so I can't truly speak on it. Postpartum depression. Well or right. Syndrome uh, of any kind. Of any kind. So I can't truly speak on it in any other way on than what little I know about it from others. But the idea is that if you are truly in a postpartum depression or psychosis, you truly genuinely do not know. And there is no seeking out because you cannot identify the issue all you feel is overwhelming sadness or loss of control or anxiety. And that overwhelming sense is all that they feel, supposedly. I'm sure there's more to it, but 
if it was truly a postpartum, then you can't say, well, why didn't she reach out? Because she couldn't because she didn't know. But she was of sound mind enough to be able to plan a trip. So that leads me to my first question of, or was she just a piece of shit? I don't know. Somebody, was... somebody who knew her before she had a child needs to answer that question. I didn't even see anything about the father or anything along those lines. Well, there was obviously not a father there. Right. So if a relationship just had dissipated either prior to having the child or shortly after having the child, that also could have led to a psychotic episode. I don't know anything about this. I don't either. You got really, just speculating. You got really somber, so I'm going to go ahead and change the topic. <laughs> it's really sad. Yeah, it is it is very sad. But, I mean, crazy shit like that does happen all the time. Um, I there keep, was a woman all, actually here who I keep did thinking, it. I keep thinking about your favorite scene from Mindhunter. I won't bring it up. Don't stop thinking about it. From Mindhunter, I believe yeah. you actually mean from the Netflix show that we watched of the woman across the street with the giant glass of wine. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, there's yeah, that's great. That ending was crazy too with the little girl. But no, oh, how her daughter died, being left alone in. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that's the scene you were talking about. It wasn't Mindhunter. All this shit blurs together. Yeah. Uh, you should fill in the audience now because now they're just sitting here listening and thinking, wow, we're just rambling. Well, her ex-husband took their took their kid to work and he's a FBI psychologist mm -hmm. supposed to evaluate blah, blah, blah. And uh, the warden called him out of... She was sitting in the same room as the prisoner with mm -hmm. him and then the warden called him out and they were talking outside the room and the prisoner was a known cannibal yeah and left alone a five-year-old ish yep. little girl yeah and immediately i started just screaming no this can't be how this little girl dies no yep. yeah so let's go back to Thank you. Thank you for just, you know, cycling it all the way around. An infant that was left to die and a fictional five-year-old character who was eaten to death. Maybe it's based on a true story. <sighs> Andrew. Eaten to death. It's just a weird way to put it. That's what I, I know, but it happened. Just, yeah, I just... you. Most people would say, like, killed and eaten, but... Eaten to death, eaten, eaten alive. I don't know that she was. The implication was that he just started eating, eating her. And whereas if it was killed and then eaten, maybe she was at least put out of her misery first. Maybe. Let's go. Let's go back to the fun conversation. The fun yeah. conversation. So let's say, let's say hypothetically, you're back in. Yeah. And we move around. Yeah. And we live in Hawaii. You're gonna let Jody. Intervene. Who's Jody? Jody. Who is Jody? Jody's the home wrecker of the military. So Jody's if, Jody's the other soldier that tries to hit on you while I'm deployed. Okay, so I was I was getting at so in this scenario, I'm with the kids and you are out of the country somewhere. Yeah. Um six, twelve, fifteen, eighteen months at a time. Well, I watched this show a really long time ago called, I think it was like Army Wives. I don't know. Um, and they all hung out together. That looked really fun. So could I hang out with other Army Wives? <laughs> yeah, but you got to remember. It's so there would be no Jody. It would it, just be other wives. It's not only, Unless it's, Jody is a woman. It's not only wives that are dependents. But yes, Jody can be a woman. Except I'm not into women, so. 
I'm s- <laughs> well, it, back back a couple seconds. Like I said, not only wives are dependents. There are women that serve as well who have husbands that are their dependents. I forgot about those people. Yeah. It's kind of still not really a cultural norm because most people don't really think about that. True. But yeah. So how long would you go? Speaking of, one of my favorite musicians I can't listen to now because I heard that that's what he did to his wife. Chaser on her? Uh-huh. While she was stationed elsewhere. She was in the military. I don't know what branch, and I don't want to misspeak. And he cheated on her while she was stationed elsewhere. That reminds me. I just saw a meme. So last... I can't listen to him now. I saw a meme last night that I I don't know if I even saved it, but I know I didn't send it to you. But it was uh, this guy is trying to impress a girl, and she says, I'm a big country fan. And he goes, well, China has a lot of people. Or China is a big country. It sounds like something you would say to me. <laughs> Just trying to impress her. Yeah, China's a big country. Chris Stapleton so much. He loves his wife so much. Or is just really good at putting no, the shit. No, I think he genuinely loves his wife that much. And what do you, what do you she think, puts up with him. What do you think people, that I put up with you? What do you think people's interpretation of us is? That I put up with you. What do you think they think of me towards you, though? I don't know, actually. I genuinely don't know. So why don't you guys tell me? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Let me know. Please school me. Yeah. Remember to visit he's wrong, she's right.com to pre order the Freedom Boner shirt. Freedom Boner. Yep. Awesome. Awesome info and graphics and stuff like that up there. There'll be a description. Like helicopter dicks will be happening, though. <laughs> no, they won't be happening. No. Come on. You know what I think would be cool? If I released some of the concept art that I had generated to come up with like our logo and the okay. ideas, but I can also release the concept art for that shirt as well. Okay. Maybe I'll put it on Patreon. Okay. You're yeah. in charge of all of this. Yeah. If you want to see, if you want to see the concept art, they're pretty cool. They're pretty good. Um, I wish, I wish I had better, I, I know there are other tools, but I was doing it on the fly. I was going back and forth between Gemini and ChatGPT and some um, local models that I have directly on my computer. But I wish that I had more granular control over things. Okay. Um, it's really hard to get prompts specific enough. Like say 95% of the image is exactly how I want it. And then I'm like, I want to change the hair color. It won't just change your hair color. It'll change everything. Not everything, but a lot of it. What are you thinking? Just... What? Breast augmentation? The amount of things that you would do. You, you, you know that that's probably going to put a lot of people out of business because one of the sites that we had looked at years ago, they had like, if you went to like that sp- that facility, they could like do a like take pictures of you and then they can show you what you look like depending on like what size you choose and stuff like that so for all of you guys who don't know he picked these out and he was in charge of sending the images into the doctor well you asked me you said send me that's what they required they required that you show what you wanted the end product to look like. So, so yeah. So now, rather than paying for these 3D modeling services, you can literally just throw it into AI. Yeah. Make my wife's tits bigger. Yeah. Or take your face, put it on somebody else. Please do um, not give the audience an idea. They've already done it, but in more crude ways. There's been pictures that I've sent or showed you that people have like photoshopped my head onto something weird. Your head, but not mine. I'm you not might've... carry. I'm not worried about your head. I care about mine. Uh huh. Sure. Don't want it on anything. Sure. Um. So no, Jody. 
No, Jody. How long would I be? Could I be gone for before you started getting desperate? That's what toys are for. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. As long as that's what you're saying, yeah. I'm not going yeah. back in though. So, no, this is all a moot point. Um, but it's a big problem within the military itself. We're also in our mid 30s, and most of these people are not. They're in their teens, early 20s. And you know, I'm not into younger boys. No, but what I'm saying is, if you were at that age, would your answer be different? Mm. No, you know that I'm a monogamous person in all regards. Okay. Okay. We'll never find out, though. So You're right. We'll never find out. But the idea of you disappearing for a couple of months is really exciting. So if anybody wants to make that happen and hire him out for a special project somewhere, goodbye. Nah. <laughs> no way. No. My life would be so peaceful. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even let me so peaceful. You wouldn't even let me go on work trips if I couldn't figure out how to get you to come with me. You wanted so desperately to go to Iowa even though it was snowing. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. That's not true. You wanted the glitz and glamour of the gala. You wanted to dress up all fancy again, be my arm candy. Okay. That part, yes. I want to do fun things with you, not necessarily go on work trips, but yes, I want to do fun things with you. Would you and if work trips are the only fun thing, then would, I'll make the best of it. Would you go to Iowa or something else like that if it wasn't work related, but in doing the exact same thing? Probably if we, not. If we were if we were invited to the gala. Is it paid for? I don't know. I wouldn't pay to go do that now. Why? On a pheasant hunt? No, to the gala. But wasn't it to do the whole thing? No, you can do one or the other or both. I, in no regard, would go across the country for one gala. Would if you, it was in the same town. Would you want to be a, a judge for like the pitch competition? I don't bring anything to the table. I can't judge entrepreneurs. So, okay, so the D... So, no, I can't do something that I don't feel qualified to do. The DC Gala last year. Well, you like to critique people's business model and their products and stuff like that. That's essentially what it is. Some of these people are like investment bankers and, you know, serial entrepreneurs that are highly successful or they're donors that work for some organization and they're there on behalf of the organization that they work for. But why not? Why not? have you know um your potential audience be part of the people that are judging you okay because everybody says it you know um big corporation buys up small company or big movie studio takes on a beloved niche project and completely changes things because they want to make as much money as possible but they also want they want their fingers all over the project they want their name on it so why not the other way around? Why not bring in the intended target audience for the product, service, whatever, and have them be at least a, a weight, a weight towards the total sum, right? right? So there's been, I actually don't know what any of the women in DC, I think one of them was some sort of medical organization, um, but in uh, Iowa, the two that were there, one of them was um, uh, female uh, incontinence support, like sportswear stuff. So for women that... Don't look at me like I not, need... Not, but no, but you know what I'm talking about. Yes. And I know several women have that problem. I don't happen to be one of them. Please don't look at me like I do. Okay. So that's, uh, I think it was Moxie, I think is what Moxie something is what our company was. I think I've actually heard of it. Um, yeah, because we were together at that time, and I was making promotional stuff for the gala. Okay. Yeah. Then maybe that's why I've heard of it, but I thought it was something. Um, the other woman in that specific one, she had those um, teddy bears that, or stuffed animals that the Brave Knights, I think is what it was called. 
check out uh, warriorrising.org. Go to their website and go to the Hall, Hall of Valor and all of the entrepreneurs that have been through their pitch competition um, are on there. Their business names and websites, you can see them all there so you'll know what I'm talking about. What teddy bears? So it's called Brave Knights and they were basically supposed to be like emotional support stuff animals for children of parents who are deployed or TDY okay. or whatever. So those were the two, like, don't you wish that you could give input on something like that? Especially if that was, you know, if you were a military spouse. Yeah. That's a lot of hypotheticals thrown at me. But I think that going in blindly not knowing what you're judging and then being able to give feedback based on your actual perception is valuable. They might not act on it, but it gives them something to think about. Like, okay, this normal mom from North Carolina would not buy this or would buy this because of this, this, and this. So if you're intending, maybe that's not your target audience currently, but if you want to expand and grow your market share and whatever you're in, mm -hmm. you are going to want to look at that information and say, okay, well, for right now, we're going to stay within our niche community because that's what we're good at. But eventually, we're going to saturate that market and we're going to need to grow. So what are these people thinking of? What can be in product development for the next year, three years, or whatever? While we grow our brand, what's our next launch going to be? Right? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. So... Obviously, they want these. They want the donors to be there because the donors pay to be there. They want investors and subject matter experts to be there. They want technical, experienced people to be there because they have the knowledge of where the market is currently, and they can say, "Well, we already have that," or "That's not really a good idea." Here's why X, Y, and Z. Can you pivot or change or improve your product mm -hmm. to fill the the space? The guys that won in Iowa. Uh, into blade is the name of their company what do they do they built a uh for a laryngoscope for um scoping and uh intubating a patient yep. they built a um essentially like a, a spray nozzle that cleans off the camera so when the surgeon or whoever is placing the tube which could be somebody like me i've i've done 30 35 intubations mostly on pediatric patients actually so being able specifically for like trauma patients, some, somebody's bleeding or, you know, there's some sort of facial neck trauma, something like that, where it's difficult to find the trachea and you don't want to, um, why can't I think of the term? You don't want to lance and insert the tube. Um, but for something like that, where there's blood and mucus and other bodily fluids and stuff like that. Um, it has a camera so they can watch the screen. They can see, make sure that they're, they're getting placement, but they can push on this syringe on the handle and it'll spray and continually clean the lens off. That way they have accurate placement. And they had all the, the background research and stuff like that regarding, um, you know, success rates and things like that. So they were very, I think uh, Andrew from their organization, he was a doctor. I don't remember what the other guy did. He was, a, I believe, he was a medic in the Army as well and then went on and became a doctor. Um, but, you know, they, they came to the table with all the information. They knew what they were doing. They didn't just have a prototype and a thought. Like, they really put in the effort, which is required as part of Warrior Rising's program, is, you know, doing all the analysis and the research and, and everything like that mm -hmm. because – they're also putting their reputation on the line by bringing right. in investors and bankers and stuff like that that say, hey, these guys all have good ideas. Come in here and judge it. There will be an opportunity you know, for you to talk to them separately from the gala and make an offer to buy their product or invest in their business or whatever. Does Warrior Rising get a percentage no. from them at all? No. I mean, I think the expectation is that some of them who stay on or come back as judges or mentors, there's a so help do their part. There's a don't, there's a, do, there's a donation requirement to come back on. 
like if you want to come back on as a mentor or coach, there's a donation requirement involved in that. What that number is, I don't know. And it could be different from person to person. It might not. It might be a flat rate. I don't know. There might be a rate for somebody that goes through the program versus somebody that doesn't go through the program. There might be a rate because it is intended for veterans and their immediate family members. So, yeah. for example, Cooper could go through it okay. because he's an immediate family member of a veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so lost my train of thought of that. Other, so talking about investing in the businesses and, and bringing that kind of knowledge and, and stuff – but having, having the ability to have your product or service looked at through a lens that you might not have otherwise considered, mm-hmm. and like I said, even if you don't actually action on it, it gives you something, even if it's um, like a, a, they call it negative, but it's it's not negative. It's, it's like counter marketing. So like negative opposite words, things like that, stuff that you want to I can't think of a good analogy for this anyways so it gives you the ability to say if I talk about this or I say this or I include this in the marketing materials it might portray something that I don't actually intend to offer or currently offer or you might want to target those specific things because you're going with the shotgun approach you're trying to spread your message far and wide hoping that you hit your intended target Everybody has their own school of thought on which one works, but I stopped listening halfway through. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I started thinking about the offer on the house again. Uh huh. That'd be nice. Oh. To essentially double my money in six years, under six years. Mm. That will get me to moan. <laughs> Not on camera. You're gonna be Scrooge McDuck. What's that? Where he's got that um, coin vault in the, like the opening of. Have my vault of money and stacks of cash. No, no, no. you have to go dive and swim in it. You got to put on your one piece swimming suit. I thought you were implying that I open it up and just start moaning because there's money and just. Yeah. Gold. uh, You're calling me a gold digger. No, no, This is a reoccurring theme on this podcast. Could you imagine? uh, Could you imagine me being a gold digger? Did you look look at For their gold dildo? That wouldn't make you moan? No. (laughs) That would not. Okay. That would not. 24 karat gold butt plug? No, thank you. Not going to happen. Okay. You say so. I do say so. It's not going to happen. Going to make yourself a 24 gear, gear gold tiara? No. Well, Have you ever well, seen well, me do that? Little crown? No. No. Nope. Okay. Nona. Yes. Where can these people find you? NonaPhelps.com for all of your insurance needs in North Carolina and South Carolina and occasionally Florida. So I say occasionally because I do not write in Florida, but my agency does they don't know what rate means right right they don't know what that means oh okay do business in yeah see i'm licensed in north carolina and south carolina i personally can take care of you in north carolina and south carolina i personally i mean i will be your agent so for a quick second here this is another reason why i have forgotten basically everything that i've ever learned in the military okay you already say that I use too much technical jargon or people don't understand me or blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I've had to try to adapt to that because I've had to explain to people, this is what, like the analogy about being a school nurse. That's basically what I did the entire time I was in the Army. I administered immunizations. I wrapped people's ankles. I checked their feet after a ruck march, told people to change their socks and drink water. Gave them Motrin, told them to take a knee and suck it up. And then I entered their information into their medical records. Occasionally I dealt with heat casualties or. Poison ivy. Yeah, a lot of that. Um, What about STDs? Please enlighten me. 
We'll circle back to my last story on the last episode about how I'm terrified of STD. Well, you, so please. That's why you always that's why you always have somebody to delegate down to. There's always somebody else that's actually interested in that stuff. I already have had to see your ass and your dick before. I don't want to see them when you have bumps and it, <laughs> Please. When you get that knock is on... Is it poison ivy of what? the dick when you, or is it herpes? When you get the knock on both. Right, and, right. So well, I'm saying in this regard, you actually have to figure out which is the case. Yeah. When you get the knock on the door, it could be one of several things. Mm-hmm. You've got some duty and you weren't answering your phone. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, when I was in, it was basically fledgling smartphone era. So you could still text, but there wasn't as much of the expectation that your phone literally lived on you because we had, I think the, the phone that I had when I joined. When what about I, pagers? Was that still of the pager? Um, I feel like you would have been somebody who would have one. No, I, I'm trying to think if I, I mean, in the medical field in general, yes, but that's also kind of gone away, mm-hmm. but um you know like when we're out doing some sort of training exercise it's all on our you know radios um i'm sure that they've probably moved more toward at least in training tradoc um ftx stx whatever they probably are more using their their phones or government issued phones they're probably not using radios but that is also a training opportunity so they might force you to use those tools because if you deploy, there's not necessarily going to be infrastructure that's going to support right. your phone. Just like why we teach people to use maps and a compass. You're probably going to have GPS, but there's also the possibility that your equipment gets fried. You could be in some sort of war zone where an EMP goes off. You might just generally not have any sort of connection with satellites. So you need to be able to figure out where you are, use a map, and yeah. So... I don't know. I'm not anymore. Somebody that's still in, you can answer that in the comments probably. But um, yeah, so it could be that. It could be some idiots were fighting. Somebody's got a bloody nose and they need it patched up. Somebody just had sex and now their shit's rotting off of them. That's also a possibility. I had I had um, these uh, really nice... It was before really, like wireless headphones were really like viable. Okay. You used to have like you used to have like a base stand that was like the transmitter, and so you had to plug it into power and then plug it into like the auxiliary port. So I had okay. these I had these Sony wireless headphones like like those, but mm-hmm. fifteen plus years ago, and I would intentionally consume most of my media with my headphones on. That way, I wasn't making noise in. My barracks room that would indicate that I was there. My car, mar- my car might be in the parking lot, but I could have been picked up or ridden with somebody else. You don't know. So you were a medic who didn't want a medic. No, that's not what it is. It's that I wanted to be bothered as little as possible. I'm already working at that point in time, specifically at RTB. We were working 36 on, 36 off the entire time I was there. We would do three-week cycles for training. We would have roughly a week off and not off. We would have a week without a class, which would involve doing all of the tedious menial work and then all the fuck. We, there was nothing really like that at RTB when I was there, fortunately. Called it big boy rules. Show up on time, in the right uniform, right place, right time, right uniform essentially is the same. If you were competent enough to do that, you were well on your way to not being hated. Um, and then being able to pass your PT test, even if you were overweight, even if you were out of shape, as long as you could pass and it wasn't just- Even you could pass PT right now, today? Running and push-ups, yes. So that's there's a sliding scale based on age and your sex. Okay. So, so you're a middle-aged man now. Yeah. So my two-mile time or five-mile time, depending on which, or they have different PT tests now, and I don't really know what. There's like deadlifts and 
ammo can carries and I don't know what all there's like it's completely different from what I did okay. the the regular army uh fitness test for the regular army was two mile run in a specified time um two minutes push-ups two minutes of setups for when you were 18 or so there's like I said there it's a sliding scale so like 17 or 16 or whatever is like to like 21 was the first range so you had to hit i think it was Wait, you just said 16 you can enlist at 16 i think in some states if you're emancipated and get waivers and yeah you've got your ged I mean, yeah i genuinely thought 17 with parental consent was no, the no i think you just have to be emancipated But again, it always changes. And um, depending on the war and the conflict, like in the early days of... Yeah, I'm talking about post 9-11, not pre-9-11. No, yeah, the GWAT, Global War on Terrorism era, post 9-11, yeah. There, I, had a guy, I had a friend that I went to high school with that was so stupid, he had to get a waiver for stupidity so he could, so could be a fuel truck driver. Um, but he wasn't 16. No, 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 but I'm saying we're talking about age here. There's always something. There's always something. There's always someone. I know, but that age is a is a tricky thing because they don't want it to come back on them that they let some 16 year old get blown up. They don't care. You're a body. You're a number. Well, the military does not care about the person. They care about the numbers and the readiness. They want to be deployable at all times. They don't care what you look like. I don't think they, a sixteen-year-old can actually carry a weapon. But so we're the we're the we're the most we're the most professional army in the world. That's what everybody um, likes to say. We we are the professionals. So, in some sense, yes. Especially when you get into some of the big boy units, they do care about your appearance, not just because it looks better on them, but also depending on your role. Um, you know, because there are people that specialize in certain foreign languages and stuff and certain special operations units. They want you to look the part, right. speak the part. Be able to blend in. Yeah. So yeah, there is some aspect, but overall, big army doesn't care. As long as you can as long as you can pass your PT test, as long as you can pass height and weight or height, weight, right, and so tape. That goes back yeah. to the question. Do you think you could pass it today? Yeah. So it's it was a two mile run in under fifteen or sixteen minutes, I think. Um, two minutes of push ups. I think you had to do like fifty three was the minimum to pass. Two minutes of what about for women? The yeah, it's way way lower. But but if you intended on going through specific schools, mm -hmm. like when so. It didn't happen while I was there. It happened shortly after I got out when they started allowing women to, like pilot programs to go through like ranger school. The expectation when you go through one of those is that now you do need to be able to carry your weight equivalent to that of your male peers. So you do have to pass on the male scale of the PT test. There's no, there might be something different now, but at the time there was no, women's scale for the RPFT, the Ranger Physical Fitness Test. That was a five mile run in under 40 minutes on terrible hills. The worst part is the turnaround point was at the bottom of one of the bigger hills. So you run down this hill, you have to turn around, you have to take your little popsicle stick so they know that you went all the way there. You get your little popsicle stick and then run all the way back to where you started at and turning around running back up the hill. Sucked, sucked. You want to know why I was so skinny? Was because my squad leader, Ranger qualified, Sapper qualified, Jump Master qualified, had gone to selection twice. Yeah. He was highly motivated, but it also meant that we were doing a lot of PT in our free time, all the time. Audie Murphy Gym, all the time. And on our days off, Audie Murphy Gym, we're going to go do CrossFit. Um, this is before CrossFit became the CrossFit as you know it. It was still people trying to figure it out. Um, nobody, like, people didn't walk around talking about it like they were vegans at that point in time. You love vegans so much. Um, but yeah. His name is Owen Davis. I believe he's, I believe he's either still in or getting ready to retire. 
I believe he made E9, Sergeant Major. Last time he was at uh, JBLM, Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington. Yeah. Cool guy. Cool guy. Sometimes I didn't like him. It's kind of annoying. Is there a weight cutoff to enlist currently? What do you mean? Like, can you not be over a certain amount of weight? Oh, like I said, no. Um, so The reason why I ask is it's, I have an acquaintance who attempted to enlist in the Coast Guard this past fall. Coast Guard's a little bit different, though, because... She was told she had to lose 25 pounds, and she's the same size as me. I don't know that the Coast Guard is hurting for people. The Coast Guard also is not Department of Defense. They have completely different standards. They're Homeland Security. So they're they're governed by a completely different entity. They're, you know, Customs and Border Protection, Coast Guard, all that stuff. They're not members of the military. I did know that. I just was wondering... So, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what their standards are, and each branch is different. You know, obviously, the Air Force and the Navy, they want their pilots to be small and light. Same thing for being on a ship. They want you to be small and maneuverable. But in the Army and the Marines, they know, like six foot one, by the they, way. They know that they're going to run the shit out of you. So all you're going to do is run and ruck and run and ruck and run and ruck, and they know eventually you're going to probably lose. Probably. Not everybody does. <laughs> um, there was a guy... It might have been when they were filming Surviving the Cut. I don't remember if it was. But there was a guy that he, uh, I think he was from West Point, And, I mean, a lot of them were. But he was drafted by the Lions. And he had to fulfill his obligation. There, I think there were some workarounds and stuff like that. And he only had to do, like, two years rather than the full. I don't remember. I don't remember all the details. Somebody will probably look it up and correct me. But, um I remember seeing this big motherfucker on day zero when we were doing the layouts and collecting contraband and checking medical records and everything like that. And just thinking to myself, like, dude, you are going to suffer because he wasn't fat. Mm -hmm. He was big, but he wasn't going to be eating the amount of food to maintain that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he signed up for it. And sure enough, sure enough, when he came back for graduation, he had lost like 80 pounds. Holy fuck. 80 pounds. Yeah. And what's the time span? 63 days, roughly. 67, 67. It, it changed while I was there. 80 pounds yeah. Yeah. in 60 days? Yeah. That is a huge weight loss. You're not. I was picturing you were going to say like 25. No, you're not. Maybe you're, 40 at most. No, like, you're not. You're not sleeping. You're barely eating. I get it. Yeah. I get it. 80 pounds. It's a buckload of but weight it, to but, drop in 60 days. But it's mostly atrophy. It wasn't him losing body fat. It was muscle atrophy. Oh. So, I mean, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I, yeah, I could, for, for my current standard, yes, I could pass. I would suffer the entire time, and I would hate every minute of it. But, yeah, so the, the key thing, too, for the old PT test, and, and let me, let me, basically differentiate between the two. So the regular PT test, two minute run, uh, or two mile run, two minutes of uh, push-ups. You cannot come out of the push-up position during the, so you have to hold yourself in a plank if you're not actively doing a push-up. You cannot stop at the bottom. You have to be fully locked out. That's your rest position. We literally call it the front lean and rest position. Okay. For sit-ups, same way. You cannot pause with your back on the ground. You have to have your, there's there's terminology for all this. Fingers interlocked on your head. Like I yeah. don't think you would be able to do a single sit-up without exacerbating your spine issue. I did it the time I was in. I know how to compensate for it. I just roll onto my left. Yeah. It sucks. It's painful. Extremely painful. Like I said, I don't think you would be able to do it without exacerbating your spine issue. Yeah. But also, at the time while I was in, they weren't letting anybody out, kicking anybody out because they needed bodies. And you don't want to be put in a position where you're not useful to your command. So you make those sacrifices essentially on your body not advocating for yourself because if you do you look like a shitbag. Gotcha. 
So, um, like I said, two mile run, two minutes of pushups, minimum of 53. I think sit-ups is minimum of 63. Maybe it was 58. I'm probably mixing all these numbers up because it's been so long. <laughs> then you have the RPFT, which was five mile run. Uh, still two minutes of pushups, two minutes of sit-ups, but the standard was the same for everybody. There's no scale on those. So for the two mile run, you just have to be under 40 minutes. I think my best was like 32 something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember. I, I used to max out my PT test and I got closer. I, I might've maxed out the RPFT. Um, but then the addition to, so you have the five mile run, which is obviously longer, more pushups, more setups. There's also a, a dead hang pull up, seven of them. And it's on command. So you have to be fully locked out, fully extended. And then they tell you when to come up and your chin has to get above the bar. And then they tell you when to go down and then they tell you when to go up. And it's that controlled motion that they're looking for. It's not, can you do seven pull-ups? It's, you know, can you actually do seven pull-ups? Not kipping like and CrossFit. And can they control you? No. No, they everybody everybody wants to know that the guy beside them is just as capable as they are. If I get hurt, I want to know that you know the technique and that you have the ability to pick me up and carry me to safety or drag me to safety. That's assuming that you're next to me when something happens. If I'm over there and you're over there and you're the medic, the medic is obviously there are people that do this. People have that hero gene, you know, and they'll go and they'll grab somebody or whatever, but that what we're trained to do is to try and get them to come to us because I'm in cover and safety right now. And if I get hurt, that potentially puts the rest of my unit at risk because now somebody else could get hurt. If I die, now these guys could potentially die or be harmed. So, uh, the same idea as the masks on the plane put yours on first before you yeah. assist others yeah so they everybody everybody wants to know that the guy on their left and the right or a woman on their left and the right is just as capable as them there are exceptions um you know there were alternative things that you could do there were people that had profiles where they couldn't run so they had a walking variation of the pt test where it was like those speed walkers we see them there's so many rules to it so many rules you have to have one foot in contact with the ground at all times when you're doing that. That's where that hip shift comes from, is them trying to keep their feet as low as possible. Um, because when you're running, there are points in time where both feet are off the ground. Um, the time is pretty fast. Like, you walk fast, but this is it's basically a, a slow jog. Um, yeah, no. I would pass it. I would suffer. It would take me a day to recover. I'd be mad about it the entire time. I'd bitch about it the entire time. Sounds like you. Yeah. In all regards. Yeah. There's just, there. there's a point that you learn while you're in the military. Maybe not everybody does, but for the most part, everybody learns this, that you just need to fucking get it over with. Just do it. On that note. This has been a boring episode. Our set's going to look different next week. Visit notofhelps.com for insurance. Visit leemaxmedia.com for web and app development. And veteranwiki.org to donate all of your money, please. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't go to me. Ed, there's uh, transparency documentation um, you know, we're on GuideStar and Network for Good and everything like that. So we are required to be scrutinized and audited. It's a very legitimate and pain in my ass organization in a good way. Like this has been a big learning curve for me. It gives me a lot of respect for people that run like successful nonprofits. It's, it's a pain. There's so much paperwork and so much stuff. It's so much that you have to maintain and keep up with. It's not like a normal business at all. And on top of that, I hold us to a higher standard than 
most other organizations, with the aim being that we can reach platinum on GuideStar this year. And we're currently ranked at? So we are silver, but that's because we just incorporated last year and we had not filed tax returns yet. Right. We could not get higher than silver. Right. Um, gold should be pretty next easily. Next file. Yeah, next. It, so what I found on the IRS website yesterday is that because our tax year ends on the 31st, can't file until after, which makes sense. But when I was trying to do the W-9s and everything else for the, the grant stuff, I was like trying to pump it out. And I was like, well, I can't even file. So I guess we just need to upload a document that says, you know, our from the IRS, our tax year ends on March 31st. I literally can't, potentially we could get some big whale wind, uh, windfall grant or donation tomorrow. Right. I don't know. Anything is possible, you guys. Yeah. Bring it. So this has been a long episode too, actually. So if you guys listened, um, planning on potentially some guests, uh, probably some remote guests initially, because we don't really, I mean, we can fit somebody probably right here, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll have to get known with some headphones because you'll have to be able to listen as well. We'll see. And here's the other thing I'm thinking with that. I think what I'll do is kind of what I had talked about, uh, Warrior Rising doing with their material for the people that were going, the, the people that were selected to go to the gala. I want to get them some sort of, equipment so that they're not just using their phone so the quality because i've watched and listened to some of these other podcasts where they have remote guests on and they're choppy and it sounds like they're on their phone doing a video call and you lose interest yeah and plus we're a small podcast people the expectation is that we can hit the same audio quality at a bare minimum the video people aren't as considered or they don't care about as much growing the video audience people are going to put this on in the background. They might look right. at it periodically, but yeah, the audio is the big deal. They want to be able to listen to it on their headphones comfortably, listen to it in their car comfortably, listen to it, whatever mode or means or whatever. So the audio is the more important part for a podcast. But so I want to get something that we could ship out with the expectation that we're going to get it back or we just continually pay to ship it to the next place, to the next place, to the next place. So camera, lighting, microphone, not giving them a laptop. They can provide their own computer. On that note. Yeah. On that note, um, let us know who you guys want to see within the the community. And who wants to sit in my chair? No, no, no. They'd be a guest of the show, not my co-host. You would still be on. And vice versa. If you had someone from your space. Yeah. Anyways. We'll be nice and cramped, comfy. I'll sit here right in the middle. <laughs> Anyways. No, no. I'm going to put the camera on you to sign off. I love you. I love you too. Happy. When? What day is this supposed to air? We're filming this Monday. on Friday. Monday. I thought you said the other one was film was airing on. I moved everything up a day early. Okay, so happy Monday, everybody. Yep. Friday, Monday. And we'll be on a regular cadence after this. We will be, like I said, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. There might be some bonus episodes. We'll we'll probably at some point differentiate between what each like a Monday might be pop culture. Tuesday might be sex talk and banter I'll figure There's, it out. yeah yeah this is all a learning curve for all of us well it's, it's not even just a learning curve it's what does the audience actually want is yeah. what do you guys want yeah. if if we don't do what they want they're not going to listen yeah so we have to cater to you assholes on that note happy monday goodbye goodbye, goodbye.